Hi friends, welcome back to our series, How to Elevate Your Portraits and Content as a Photographer. In our last episode, we talked about how to create cinematic portraits with your editing in Adobe Lightroom. Today, we're gonna take it a step further by talking about how to maintain the skin tones of your subjects while editing in Adobe Lightroom and Photoshop. As always, some disclaimers, there are several key factors that are really important when it comes to maintaining your subject's skin tone throughout the whole photo process. These include properly lighting your subjects. You really wanna make sure that you are properly exposing for your subjects while you are shooting. This is focusing on the exposure, your white balance, et cetera. You want to make sure that you are capturing your subject as true to real life in camera. Aiming to have that accurate lighting of your subjects is going to save you so much time when it comes to your post-processing. The second part is going to be understanding skin tones as well as your undertones. Now, I won't dive too deep into this specific component as there are plenty of resources on the internet to help you understand what skin tones and undertones are, including the research that I have for you guys down below in the description bar. And in this resource, I also made sure to include an example of what cool, neutral, and warm undertones look like so that way y'all know what to look out for. And again, knowing your subject's undertones can help you not only when it comes to shooting and editing, but it's also really helpful when it comes to choosing the best background color and even wardrobe for your subject. You know, you wanna focus on the colors that are going to really make your subject pop while you're shooting. When it comes to my editing, I really prefer to utilize the HSL sliders in Adobe Lightroom and select the color in Adobe Photoshop to help maintain my skin tones. Let me show you how. Okay, so we are now in Adobe Lightroom. So I'm going to focus on first changing this background color. I don't think it suits her skin tone well. I think it makes her look a little bit kind of red. Um, so I'm going to remove the hue of the green as well as reduce the saturation of the green. I think that bright green just wasn't sitting well for me. And I'm gonna go into my background, create a background um, layer mask and go ahead and increase the exposure of that background. Um, maybe see if I can play around with the temperature, see if that helps. And I'm just really doing this until I feel like the background at least complements your skin tone a bit more than the original background color. Now we're gonna go into our basics tab and just go ahead and make some slight color correcting um, adjustments. I'll crop in this photo a bit just by my preference. And then I'm gonna show you this before and after. So this is already making a huge difference, right? So go ahead and just adjust your, your settings just as you see fit. Um, so I'm just gonna adjust the shadows, the blacks, the whites, until I feel like I'm comfortable where that sits. And then I'm gonna show you all how you can use the HSL sliders when it comes to editing skin tones. So you'll see here that when it comes to her specific skin tone, red, or excuse me, orange is really, impacting her skin right so when you're editing skin you'll either see red orange or yellow be the main colors that will actually impact the skin so you want to be careful even when it comes to increasing the saturation like you don't want to make them too yellow too orange um so you want to make slight adjustments and make sure that it is still looking true to your subject you can also refer back to the original photo as well and then same thing with luminance. The luminance helps to brighten or dull in the skin. So you want to be mindful with how much you are playing with that within your red, orange, or yellow. And already with that before and after, you can see a significant difference between um, what it looks like. The Obviously, the background color changing helped a lot, but we've still been able to maintain her skin tone. So now we're going to go ahead and do some color grading to this image just to take in some of the concepts we talked about previously in the last episode. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start with my shadows wheel and try to add some colors there, also in the highlights and the midtones. Now the concept with this is that you want to add the colors to obviously add that cinematic feel, but of course you wanna be mindful of what the skin tone of your subject looks like, right? So comparing that before and after is gonna be really important so you can really make sure that you're maintaining the skin tone. I do think that she's pulling a little orange, so I'm going to go ahead and pull back on that. But here is our final image and our before and after. So now I'm going to show you a second example of what this can look like. We're going to edit this photo specifically in Photoshop, but I am going to do some of my basic color adjustments within Lightroom just to kind of make sure. And I, I think this is a great example of a subject that is properly lit, especially when you're shooting 
studio lighting, you can really control what it looks like. So you're not seeing that even with my basic adjustments that there were really much changes between the before and after, but just the slight adjustments there have made a slight difference. And I think she was already properly exposed, which is really great. I just really want to focus on how I can make her skin tone look a bit more rich. So we're gonna go ahead and send this photo over to Photoshop and focus on how we can do that with the selective color adjustment layer. You're gonna pull that up and you'll see that you have your reds, yellows, and those are the two components that are again are going to impact your skin the most. So we're gonna start with the reds. And you can see, I'm gonna zoom in so you can see a bit more. You can see that as I'm removing and adding the cyan, how that is really impacting the skin. And I feel like Selective Color does a really great job of kind of taking it a step further than your HSL slider. So this is my preferred method when it comes to editing skin tones. So I'm just gonna play around the sliders just to see where the color falls. And I tend to just do this with what looks best to my eye. So I will encourage you to do the same, but you can again, turn off and on your layer. So that way you can see what that looks like with your portrait as well. So we're gonna go ahead and show you that slight before and after. Very slight, but it kind of just deepened the rich, the, it just kind of deepened her skin tone slightly more. And I just feel like it looks really beautiful. Now I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing with the yellows. I'm actually gonna delete this layer and create a mask because what you'll see, what you did see was that the yellows was picking up the yellows in the background. So I'm gonna make a mask for my subject and then go back and recreate another adjustment layer. So then that way I can focus on the yellows that are within her skin. So again, same thing I was doing before, just adding or removing scions, magenta, yellows, and the blacks, just to see where I like where it falls. Now you don't wanna do too much because you will see that if you go too far with the slider that you will see that your subject's skin tone undertones are going to change, but you don't want, you just want to enhance. So slight baby adjustments are going to be your friend throughout editing skin tones. You don't wanna make too big of a difference, especially if you light your subject properly, there shouldn't be much more that you have to do when you're actually editing. So we were able to do that. I'm gonna reduce this opacity a little bit. I felt it was a little too much. And then I'm gonna put that in the group and show you that before and after. And you can see that we were really able to deepen for skin tone, keep it the same tone and maintain our undertones as well. But if her skin just looks a bit more rich than it did originally, adding a bit more of that color, that contrast in there, which I really do love. So that is your before and your after. And similar to what we did with the first image, we're gonna go ahead and do some color grading. I'm gonna add some like orange yellow to the shadows just to see where it falls. And then I'll kind of move to my midtones and highlights and see what I like. But also again, making sure that I am maintaining the skin tone of my subject. You don't wanna add any color that now makes them look too orange, red, or too you know, cool, warm, et cetera. You wanna make sure that you are looking at your before and afters. And if you need to make any adjustments, you can go to your HSL sliders. So then that way you can pull back. Like in this case, she is a little orange. So I'm gonna pull back on the saturation of the orange a little bit until I am satisfied with my final image. Now that we've covered how to maintain the skin tilt of your subjects, in the next episode, we're going to talk about how to elevate the backgrounds of your portraits. I'll see you there.